In this video, I'm going to go over an example of doing vector addition in C. So vector addition is when we have these tuples here called vectors, and we want to add them together. And the way we add them together is we add together the corresponding elements in the tuple to produce a new tuple. So we'd have like two and three added together to get five, and five and two added together to get seven, and four and one added together to get five. So when we do V1 vector addition V2, we get five, seven, five as a result. So we can use arrays to model the tuples, and we could use a loop to go from the first index in the array to the length of the array and add together the corresponding elements in each of these arrays here, V1 and V2, and store it in a result array. And that would be a simple way of implementing vector addition in C. So we'll make a function to do that. We'll call it void. We'll say void is a return type, and we'll say vector add and it'll take in float v1, which is gonna be an array of floats. It'll take in float v2, another array of floats, float results, another array of floats to store the result, and a length, which is gonna be the length of our vectors here. And it's void because the function doesn't really need to return anything. The result is going to be stored in the result array that is passed to vector add. And this is an example of what's called pass by reference or more accurately pass by pointer in C. If you're not familiar with that, I do have a video posted on passing arrays to functions that can make it clear why result is going to store the array the way store the result the way it does. So let's make a loop here. I'm going to say for int i is equal to zero, i is less than length, i plus plus. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take v1 and v2, I'm going to add them together at each corresponding element given by i, and I'm gonna store the result in result at i. So here, what I'm saying is i is gonna go from zero until the length of the vector, and we're gonna increment i by one each time. So it's gonna go zero, one, two, three, up until the length of the vector here. And we're gonna store in result at i, v1 at i plus v2 at i. So we're just adding together the corresponding elements and storing them into the result corresponding element. And that's really it. So we could really test this out now. So I could say here, float v1 is equal to, and I might as well use the numbers I've got here. So I can say here like two, five, four, I'll say float v2 and I'll say three, two, one. And then here I'll make a result array. So I'll say float result, and I'll initialize it to zero, zero, zero. It needs to be a float array of length three to store the result, because we've got vectors of length three. And I'm just initializing it to zero just for the sake of initializing it to something. So we can then call our function here. So I could say vector add, and I could say here v1, v2 results, and then the length of the vectors here is three, so I'll pass in three. And that should add together v1 and v2, and it'll store the result in result. So I could then write a loop to print out the result just to make sure that it's actually working correctly. So I could say, i is equal to zero, i is less than three, i plus plus. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a, a printf in here that's gonna print each element of the result array, the result vector here. So we're gonna say printf, and we'll say result percent %d is equal to percent %f. And I'm gonna print, print out i, and I'm gonna print out result at i. And the idea here is that I'm going from zero until the length of the result vector, and I'm gonna print out, you know, which element in the array, which element in the vector it is with this percent %d here that i is keeping track of. And then I'm gonna print out percent %f, this placeholder here is gonna print out the actual, um, the actual value stored in the array at that position. So if we run this here, we expect to get back what we had up here, which is 575. So let's give this a try here. I'll compile this here and I'll run it and I get 575 back. And so our function does appear to be working correctly. And if you're not familiar with how arrays are passed to functions, like I said, I do have a video posted about that passing arrays to a function. And what's going on here essentially is that result, when it gets passed to vector add here, what's really being passed is a memory address for result in the main function. And when we access result like this in vector add, it's actually modifying result 
in the main function because what vector add is given is a memory address for that array. And that's why this function doesn't have a return value in the traditional sense. That's why it's just sort of modifying this result array that that exists in main that we've defined and declared in main already. There's other ways we could make a vector add function. If we wanna learn about dynamic memory allocation, we could make a vector add function that dynamically allocates space for a new array and stores the result in that new array and then returns a pointer to that new array that's been created. So there are other ways we could have gone about this, but for a simple vector add function, this will do. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.